Hey, Van Pappas here, and welcome back to Between Two Trains, and a Happy New Year to you. I hope you're starting your 2020 off right. So during the holidays, Eric and I took a short break from interviewing great entrepreneurs from the North DeKalb area, so this episode we're going to do something a little bit different. There are two guys in the Dunwoody area, Justin and Matt, who started a podcast about the same time I did called What's Up Dunwoody. It's a great podcast. It's one of my favorites, and it's in my list uh, that I listen to on a regular basis. And so I was very fortunate to be on their show back uh, late summer. And so this episode of Between Two Trains, we are going to bring you a broadcasting of the What's Up Dunwoody podcast that I was on. So take a listen, and I highly recommend in your podcasting app that you add What's Up Dunwoody to your playlist. What's up, Dunwoody? When we started the podcast about a year and a half ago, there was another show that we kept seeing that was based in Chambly. He was using the same Podbean platform that we use to syndicate our show with. He was out there interviewing small business owners in his immediate community. There was a lot of similarities between the two shows, and there just weren't that many people doing that kind of thing back then. Uh, not around mid-sized suburban cities like Chambly or Dunwoody. So it was destiny that we would eventually have Van Pappas on our podcast. If you're new to the show, my name is Matt Weber. I'm the Dunwoody Realtor Dude. I help friends just like you through the whole escrow process. Buying and selling real estate can be quite stressful for many, but I'm an excellent handholder, and together we can find the right home for you. My co-host is also my brother-in-law, Justin Dyke. Justin is founder of PoolDues.com and father of five of my nieces and nephews. The show has one sponsor, Brett Friedman, Village Orthodontics. He was one of our OG listeners, and he has a local business that he wanted to align with what we were doing for some reason. You can find all of our info and more at whatsupdunwoody.com. Here's our conversation with Van Pappas of the Between Two Trains podcast. What's up, Dunwoody? Welcome back to the What's Up, Dunwoody podcast. All right, so we're here with uh, Van Pappas. He is a fellow podcaster, and we right, where do you want to start? Uh, you tell me, guys. So yeah, Let's hear about Shambly. So yeah, I've, I'm in Shambly. I'm doing a similar podcast to what y'all are doing here. I love What's Up Dunwoody. I've, I've been listening to it since day one. And, uh, you know, our podcast in Shambly uh, called Between Two Trains. That's between the number two trains.com. Uh, Which trains are those, by the way? So we got the Norfolk Southern and the MARTA. And oh, we got okay. two trains. And oh, so as, okay. as a financial planner, I deal with a lot of entrepreneurs. And one of the things when I sit down and talk with an entrepreneur that, you know, you, when, if you've ever run a business or started a business, it sometimes feels like you're lying on an, a railroad track with the train coming down. And that's what spawned the idea that in Zach Galifianakis's Between Two Ferns. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, that, that's that's where I got the idea for Between Two Trains. But um, we're, we're a tiny bit less creative with just What's Up Dunwoody. <laughs> hey, I think What's Up Dunwoody is awesome. I think you should start a What's Up Shambly. A What's Up Shambly. What? Funny you mentioned we should, that. We should, you should uh, franchise the... Uh, the name out. Well, to, I, okay. You want to so, ask your question? Yeah. yeah. You, you don't own the domain, do you? No. Okay. Someone does. Though. Someone somebody, owns somebody, grabbed, somebody bought it in the last like six months. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, wow. And what's up Sandy Springs. Now they didn't get what's up Dorville or what's up Brookhaven because I got to them right at, as soon as I saw that that was happening. Yeah. You were on a short list though. It was before we you knew you. It, you I was, it was like, me? maybe yeah. it was him, you know? Like, <laughs> well, we were like, who's the other podcaster around? Yeah. Who would like, do that? Yeah. It's, so uh, it's a great, I think y'all have got a great brand and that's important uh, is that brand name. Somebody else and, thought it was good too. And if you could franchise it out to, you know, these different little communities because because, you know, let's be honest, I'm, I'm a big community guy. For me, it's all about my little community. And the reality is Dunwoody and Chambly, you know, when I grew up in the 70s and 80s, they were vastly different areas. They're not so much that different anymore. They, they've sort of come, you know, together really in, in a lot of ways. I feel like Chambly is growing taller well, Shambly is definitely growing taller. I guess Dunn Perimeter Ch- is too. So. Changing the perception of what they are, you know, no longer being a, you know, an industrial type town. Um, I sit on Shambly's downtown development authority. And so a lot of what you see going on in Shambly right now was, you know, started from that authority, you know, kickstarting development up and down Peachtree Boulevard. 
Yeah. So obviously you're a fan of it. You, you like I'm it. a What's huge. Happening? I'm a huge fan of Shambly. I'm a huge fan of uh, Brookhaven. And I'm a huge fan of Dunwoody. I think North DeKalb, these little three cities here on the North DeKalb, really have something unique. And um, I think the more the cities can interact and function together. You know, because let's be honest, DeKalb County is not exactly... Uh, They're not helping. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which is fine. Let, let them do their thing, and the three cities can sort of run away with the rest of it. Yeah, yeah and you guys have your own police force, right? We do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so Shambly, unlike Dunwoody and Brookhaven, which are and Sandy Springs, which are much newer cities, Shambly and Doraville are actually very old. Shambly's like 112 years old. Dorville's even older than that. Um, and so, yeah, Shambly has its own police force. Funny enough, it was started, the police force was started because um, Peachtree DeKalb Airport used to be a military base, Fort Gordon. And um, the, the military officers would come over to Shambly, and there was actually a red light district in Shambly where, you know, these guys, you know, back in the 1905 could. <laughs> Could get you know this is all get lucky yeah. yeah yeah they could get lucky <laughs> and so it was such a problem that the city had to start its own police force just to to clean that up yeah I like you grew up in Shambly and you I know you know that they have a police force uh, never I had any run-ins I couldn't remember yeah yeah. yeah. Actually, you know what? I think I got that policeman's hat. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That he, he left. Did. Yeah, now I think yeah. of it, it was a Shambly one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Well, tell us about uh, what's up with the town center area. So, yeah, that looks it's pretty exci- exciting. It's exciting stuff over there. You know, the development authority has spent the last six years, um, you know, gathering properties, acquiring properties, and uh, has done a, a master plan for a town center. And um, it was very. Um, important to make sure that we didn't scrape our downtown we weren't interested in just leveling everything we wanted to keep the character and feel so a lot of what you're going to see occurring is rehab of warehouse buildings and and bring them up and so uh, you're probably going to see the first phase of all that start in either the first or second quarter of 2020 Um, there's a large six acre lot next to the post office that's about to get developed um, and that's going to be a jam- game changer. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited how close it is to assembly. I mean, if you could just get that trail going down yeah. there, that would be pretty is cool. Is that part of the plan? The p- part of the city plan is to extend our rail trail. We have a number of railroad spurs that are unused, and the city is basically acquiring those to extend the rail trail from the neighborhoods on the west side of Peachtree Boulevard to go all the way through our mid-city and downtown and, as you said, extend to the assembly project. Okay, that is planned. Yeah, cool. that is definitely the plan. If, 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 the sim, if Doraville, because assembly is not in Shambly. Right. That's a Doraville property. Right. And if but Doraville, it's so close to the edge. It there, is yeah. right up against the edge. It it actually should have been Shambly, to tell you the truth. But, yeah. Um, if Doraville can make something happen, they seem to keep stumbling with that. Yeah, it's project. Moving, moving slow, but yeah. we did talk to the mayor. It sounded they're, like uh, they're they're taking Donna, steps. Talked to Donna Pittman. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. she's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, I'm, like I don't great. live in Doraville, obviously, but I hope she she's up for re-election. I hope she uh, she wins. I don't know if she's got speaking any of mayors. You were you were pretty close to being mayor last year, right? Uh, yeah, in 2017, I did. I decided to to run. Um, couple, you know, thoughts. One. You know, I come at everything from a financial planning background. You know, Oxygen Financial is my my financial planning firm. I've been doing this for 20 years. And so when I sit down with anything I do, I say, how can we put a financial planning perspective on it? And I was very disappointed in the city of Chambly does a great job and they've never gone into debt. But I think they don't necessarily always think of how can we generate more revenue for ourselves And what most people don't know, I studied the the city's financials, and what most people don't know with these small municipalities, I've never looked at Dunleys, but I would bet you it's almost the same thing, is most of the city's revenue does not come from our residential property taxes. Uh, In Chambly, it's less than 14% of the city's revenue. Oh, wow. So where does it come from? Where does it come from? That's a great question. Well, it comes from the business community. Business license, occupational taxes, permit fees, pouring license, alcohol license, all those different business-related expenses in Shambly make up about a third of their revenue, and then another third comes from 
commercial property valuations, the yeah. taxes on commercial properties. I know that's big and done. You know, and then there's a all. few a few million here and there uh, from enterprise funds like car rentals and hotel motel mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And now we're getting, you know, because DeKalb County passed the uh, the SPLOS, so we'll be getting some money from that for infrastructure projects. Yeah. Yeah, we sat down with uh, Perimeter, or uh, let me try that again. We sat down <laughs> with the P- PCID a couple PCID, weeks ago. PCID, that's yeah, right. PCID. And it was interesting how they are kind of joining the cities together and yeah, communicating I mean, between us. I think that was something we needed. I think that's strong. I've been very impressed with what the PCID is uh, doing. In fact... Um, Jimmy Ellis and a number of the larger business owners in Champlain are in the process of trying to form a CID for our area. It'll include from Chambly all the way over to Mercer University. I, I hope they can get it in place because, you know, when you have business owners self-taxing themselves, you're going to be a lot more successful. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I was when, amazed. When you, leave it, when you people... leave it up to politicians, you know, they've got their own agendas. Chambly Plaza is looking good. So Shambly Plaza is a really interesting piece of property. You know, um, in 2009, after the recession, um, it was owned by a um, large national um, a REIT company, a company called DDR, and they were just unloading everything they could. They made a couple of crucial mistakes. They carved out some pieces, some idiot you know, in their company said, oh, we'll carve out the Chick-fil-A and we'll sell that lot to Chick-fil-A and we'll carve out the IHOP and we'll sell that to the IHOP. And so now you've got this... And the lodge thing too, right? Well, the lodge was always owned by the Masonics. Yeah, they own that little corner there um, and they're unwilling to move or sell. (laughs) Um, they, They, I don't know what goes on in there. There's no windows in that brick building. Um, I don't they know. do some grilling. You'll see the grill. In the back, they've got some grilling <laughs> going on, but I don't know if they've got some secret tunnels or what over there. <laughs> I better Not be, ca- I better be careful away. what I say about yeah. them, right? I'll edit that out so that we don't, <laughs> we don't all get assassinated. Right. Um, it would but, be, but it would be weird if there was this like Avalon type thing that grew up around that, and there's still this Masonic. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that, ha- that was gonna happen. So um, after. DDR sold off those two parcels. They put the rest of it up for sale, and a local company called Trinity Development bought it in, I think, either 2009, 2010. With huge plans, right? They had huge plans. They went to the county and got uh, some tax abatements, um, and uh, they created this whole Blue Ribbon Commission to get city input and citizens' input, and it looked impressive. Um, and it went in front of council at the time and they didn't necessarily liked it. They wanted him to go back to the drawing board. And then he came back a couple of years later and wanted to put some apartments on there. And they said, no way in hell, it's not zoned for that. So, you know, what you're seeing, I think is the best option that we can have a, a nice facelift and some new tenants in there. What would you have liked to have seen if that Chick Fil A? I would have liked to have seen a a deal happen. Move it out to the street. Try to not necessarily because it's difficult to bring everything out to the street on that street because Mm -hmm. you're talking about Peachtree Boulevard, forty thousand cars a day up and down that. It's not like people are walking up and down Peachtree Boulevard. Yeah, Um, not the people that are. But I think I really liked his original. Trinity's original first plan, they were going to take out the center section of the plaza and and create a road. Broad Street was going to go straight across right into his property. He's going to make this whole food court type area with multiple restaurants and whatnot. And uh, I was very impressed with that. He was going to uh, buy the gas station and move that out. Um, but he just kept running into problems. The Masonic Lodge said, we're not going anywhere. He, he threw a big number on him. He even said, I'll build you a, a new building. But I guess, you no know, tunnels. Big, no tunnels. No. The secret passageways <laughs> have to be preserved. <laughs> that is an odd one. You, yeah. You've been around Chambly Plaza your whole life. I mean, yeah, and it, it, it kind of oh, I have too. I, my, my very first job as a teenager was in Chambly Plaza. There used to be a Refco Drugs in there. Yeah. And, and that was the first job I ever had. Yeah, it kind of had its heyday. I mean, it was yeah. it was Oh, back then in right. the in the eighties. I mean, you had Woolworths and you know Hancock Fabrics, and the whole thing was full. There was a grocery store. 
You know, Athens, it was a, it was Athens, a dump. Pizza. Athens Pizza. You That's remember good. the Athens Pizza yeah. was in there. When I came into your family, it was a dump. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I would kind of say it still is a little bit. I mean, at it's least half better. of it. I mean, when you have that furniture outlet thing, or whatever it is, yeah. the, the overstock. Well, the good news is Home Goods is coming in. Five, Five below. below is about to open. TJ Maxx is coming in. Um, you already got the Crunch Fitness. And so he's filling it up. Um, the big question mark's going to be a grocer and it's going to be difficult for him to get a grocer in that old building especially when you've got the whole foods just down the road now you know um so what is the plan i mean that's what he's looking for he's looking for a grocer oh. and he hasn't got any signed last i heard he hasn't gotten any signed i think it's going to take something like a an aldi or a lidl or one of those alternative type you know, uh, or you got to put the quarter in for the shopping cart. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so yeah, weird. I think it's going to be tough to get any <laughs> big brand. You're not going to get a Publix. You're not going to get a Kroger or anything like that in there. Yeah, I'm trying so. to think what could go in there instead. I don't know, roller derby. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's go back to podcasts. Let's talk podcasts. Yeah, um, who, who's your favorite interview that you've had? Oh man, Ooh, so we, that's ouch. a great question. It's uh, putting me on the spot there. Um, and you do less interviews; it's more just a conversation, like it we is, do. Yeah. Too, so, so what? What? Uh, you know, my podcast stemmed after I ran for mayor, and I said, "Okay, what do I do now?" Um, I've still got this thriving financial planning practice, but I want to help the local businesses, and so. I came up with the idea. I knew nothing about podcast. Um, yeah, I don't know right. how much time you spent before you started, but you know, I listened to a bunch of podcasts That's where to, I was to at. get I a feel listened. for. It. Yeah. I listened to what other people were doing, took bits and pieces, and then I said, "Why don't I just um, interview local Brookhaven and Shambly business owners?" And I made a list uh, from my days of starting the Shambly Chamber of Commerce of different business owners that I wouldn't mind hearing their story. You knew enough of them. Yeah, I knew plenty of them. I had a list of like 25 businesses, and then I went around to a couple of them to see if they'd be interested. I got a few, what the hell's a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> um, but then I got a couple on there, and now it's to the point where the business owners are, are just coming, wanting to be on there. And we strictly just, I have a co-host, he couldn't be here today, but uh, you know, we sit down and just have a 30 minute conversation about their business, what it's like to be an entrepreneur and, mm -hmm. and, um, and you get some really interesting stories. Uh, really fascinating. One was everyone knows the frosty caboose in downtown Chambly, the little ice cream that's in a, an old train car. And what I didn't know when interviewing, uh, Pam, the, the owner was there's actually a business out there that sells train cars. You can, if you want a train car, you can go buy one. Yeah. You can buy a caboose. What? <laughs> you know, there's an internet site for this company that sells train cars. So she, that's, she knew nothing about ice cream business. You know, she was in real estate. Well, she just find that lot. And I was like, it's right next to the train track. Well, Let's get a her, train. The funny thing is her brother was a real estate developer across the street where you have vintage pizza and you have the, the lofts above them. Mm -hmm. He built that. And so... She was at that site almost every day during the construction, and she saw the lot across the street and said, you know, hey, let me, let me do this. That's good. That's cool. So story. probably, though, the best interview on the podcast so far has been the new Ace Hardware that's in Shambly Plaza. Yeah. Um, and so uh, local group, uh, you know, a couple, uh, they – she lives in Huntley Hills, and he's been with Ace forever. And there used to be, back in the heyday, an Ace Hardware in Shambly Plaza. And it went out of business, and um, he just thought it would be a great place for it. I love and the, the family feel of it's the, Ace, too. It's definitely a family feel, and the community has eaten it up. I feel sorry for Lowe's because I know a ton of people have said, well, we're going to Ace Hardware now. Especially in Huntley Hills, you yeah. can walk there. I mean, yeah, yeah, you can walk there. I mean, that's where I do all my my gardening business now. Mm -hmm. It was a great interview because Brian Fisk, the owner, just came across very genuine, and it was fun to talk with him. He had a lot of fun, you know, with it. So, have you talked to the owner of Hopsticks yet? Haven't I, Andy Tan? Um, you know, I know him well. I've reached out, and he wants to come on the show. We just haven't coordinated him yet on there. 
And and since I'm gotta get that calendar, Lane. yeah, I got to got to get him on the calendar, and and that's the biggest thing is since I'm only doing two a month, it's it's tough to get because there's so many. You know, that's the one thing about the Chambly area that's very impressive is they got tons of. There's over 2,100 businesses in Chambly, and a lot and of we, them are new. A lot of them are new, and unlike Dunwoody that has you know the State Farm and the Mercedes Benz and all these big. You know, for and Sandy Springs that has all the Fortune 500 companies. Shambly, those 2,100 businesses are all mom and pops. Yeah, they're literally literally small businesses. Yeah, they're all small businesses, and so they love coming on the show because it gives them some free advertising. You know? Right. Uh, what's your favorite place to eat? Right. Now? Oh, I don't want to put you on the spot. What's What's some place in Shambly that you've been eating at frequently? Well, I, I'm. There's a lot of great restaurants that have come to Shambly. Um, I still am a big fan of um, uh, Tom Brown at uh, Mad Italian. I think you had him on your show mm-hmm. at once. Sold him a house, too. Oh, there. did you really? Yeah. Um, he, he lives him six Sh- houses down. Oh, okay. Him and Shannon, I, I think the world of the great entrepreneurs, you know, they're, I talked with them yesterday. They're going to probably be um, opening their second place, which is going to be in the old location of my time it's going to be a burger place yeah, the, the um, but I, it's hard for me not to love vintage pizza because um they came into shambly after the recession at a time where there was not a single restaurant in downtown shambly and they took a chance and you can see they're very successful you know they now have a location in dunwoody too mm-hmm. and um but if you go to the shambly vintage pizza during lunch it's tough to find a place to sit. I mean, it is. They do a phenomenal lunch, you know, meal. Yeah. And so... Um, I'm a big fan of the Southbound. Right Southbound there. is great. Mike Plummer and what he has built, you know, obviously the price is a little bit higher. And, you know, so if you're going to lunch every day, you know, you're going to hit up the Vintage or the Hop Sticks or the... Or the um, frosted this frosted <laughs> definitely. Well, that's and, my kind of lunch. Right and here. if you and I told Pam, I said you need a frost. You need to follow vintage. If they open a yeah. store in Dunwoody, you need a new caboose there in Dunwoody Village. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know because a lot of her business comes from people having their dinner at Vintage and then walking across the street. Yeah. So. So you started what you started like a week before us or two weeks before us. And how many yeah, shows yeah. have you put out now? Um, I'm only in my 30s since I'm only doing two a month. I okay. think 36, 38, somewhere around there. Has that helped the uh, financial planning at all? Oh, absolutely. Is it more yeah. Side? Um, funny enough, the running for mayor helped the financial planning. Um, you know, I, I say it's the best 46% loss ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, because and I how got. How many votes was it? Um, we had 2,000 people vote in our election. It's funny that people just don't come out and vote know, in the local municipal. Mind. It's like the most important one because it affects your daily life so much more than the national stuff. Yeah. And no one comes out. Shambly's got 28,000 residents. Only about 11,000 of them are registered to vote. And typically, we only get about eleven or 1,200 people actually voting. We were able to, in my election, get up to 2,000 people that voted. Um, we did a really good job of, of getting And I think part of that was... Two guys running, maybe. It was the first time in a long time that anyone had run against our current mayor. Uh, um, you know, he typically runs unopposed. And so, like, why go vote if there's no one to vote for? So, nine, so you got about 950 votes. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. If only you well, shook I hands. Literally, you know what? I know. If I just gone to one more street, <laughs> yeah, one yeah. more neighborhood... Um, but what's really funny is that um, I literally had people call me after the election going, yeah, I want to sit down and talk you know, about my financial planning with you. Um, I had been wanting to do it, but I was waiting to see if you were going to win or lose. And I'm thinking, wait, <laughs> wait. So if I had won, you wouldn't have called me. I would have lost your business. <laughs> yeah, I would have lost your business. So that's why I call it the best 46 percent loss ever. Like, oh, you'd be too busy doing that mayor stuff. I guess you know it's a part time gig. You right, know, yeah. the, these mayors of Dunwoody, Shambly, all them they're they're not full time yeah. jobs. Yeah, yeah they, it doesn't pay full time money at Shambly. No, right? it's we like know nineteen thousand dollars a year. Same. Yeah, pretty, pretty you're not same doing that as your only job. You know, get health care so. though. <laughs> Good, definitely good health care and benefits. Yeah. But I didn't need that. I've got, as a financial planner, I got that covered. Enough connections. Yeah. I'll live forever anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. What else is going on in Chambly? 
So, you know, I mean, you've seen, you've been up and most people have been up and down Peachtree Boulevard and they've seen the transformation. Um, you know, that really started uh, about five years ago when the development authority said, here's a, a vacant, you may remember next to the Walmart was a big vacant slab. It used to be the old farmer's market. Right. You remember when it was the farmer's market? Yeah. And in 2007, the farmer's market went out of business and then it was such a bad building. I mean, if you ever walked into that farmer's market, it stunk. It was like as close as you'll get to like a Star Wars cantina. Oh, yeah. That's a <laughs> yeah. great way to yeah. put it. It was just brutal. So Even they, the characters They there. literally yeah. tore the – it was so bad they tore the building down. And it sat as a slab for, you know, I mean, what, seven years, eight years? Um, and the development authority came in and said, hey, let's do something here. And uh, right now there's a, a multi-story apartment complex there called the Oliver. And uh, that, I think, really was the shot in the sky that said, hey, come look at Shambly. Yeah, it's well, it, fancy, too. And I isn't mean, that the one that has the Shambly? Has the Shambly sign, sign on yeah, it. That yeah. was something that was very important in, in the whole deal. We originally said, you know, what do we want to put there? And it was very evident that we had a three-prong approach to how we wanted to do development. The first thing was to bring people. You have to have people. So that's why a lot of people don't like apartment complexes. We got a lot of grief from citizens saying, hey, you know, uh, you're bringing in all these people. Traffic's going to be horrible. You're going to overload the schools with all these kids that live in the apartments. I checked with the management of the Oliver. There's one teenage kid in the entire building. That's what we keep hearing. You know, it's not answer. it's not geared for families. It's geared for young millennials who want to be close to the MARTA. And that's what you want. I yeah. Mean, that's what you want in your city. And so then that was the first prong. The second prong was, well, now we need retail. And so uh, Whole Foods was sniffing around. We cut a deal with them. Uh, which I find very funny because if you know that area where Whole Foods was, it was the old Oxford chemical site. And it went from that to the highest, what is it, biggest commercial deal in Atlanta's yeah. history. <laughs> yeah, it sold, it sold one year after it was built for $67 million. What? Whoa. For yeah. an old chemical. An old, a <laughs> contaminate. That's what I think is funny. Uh, Whole Foods is this great clean living granola and they yeah. and they put they plop themselves on top of an old contaminated uh, chemical site. Shambly's changed so much nobody will remember no one will remember that <laughs> you know but it has definitely driven you know there's a whether you shop at Whole Foods or not it definitely from an economic perspective sure. it created a halo effect and you saw right across the street was an old boarded up gas station Buddy's gas station as soon as we cut the deal and People knew Whole Foods was coming. Chase Bank bought up that corner Which lot. Which is funny because normally they moved to Dunwoody. Yeah. Instead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and so that halo effect I think is important. Mm -hmm. you know? it, and so then we said, all right, what's the, th the third prong of our attack? We've got people living here. We've got retail for people to go to. We need um, office. And so the... Next to the Oliver was a vacant, chained-up MARTA parking lot. And there was a uh, real estate group that wanted to put a three-story office building there. So we worked with them to get, uh, it's called the Trackside, and it's Class A office, which Shambly didn't have any of it. Yeah. So that was really, you know, the attack that the development authority said, how can we, you know, spearhead and, and promote? And now you have all these other things you know, at the end of Claremont, the whole we complex where the the old Great Gatsby used to be, and now it's such a wonderful, you know, development with all these businesses. They're about to finish phase two with you know more apartments and more retail, um, and that backs up to our our rail trail that uh, people can walk straight to the retail without ever getting in their car. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about that rail trail that yeah. runs. It runs literally under underneath Peachtree Boulevard, so you never have to get on that busy road. What? Yeah, I didn't know. It goes this. from Keswick. Yeah. It goes to... from Keswick Park. Oh, all right, and it goes through all yeah. the park area. Goes through that new development we were just talking about there, where the Bad Daddy's Burgers and mm -hmm. all the other restaurants are. And it goes under Peachtree Boulevard. And there's a whole little, it's really cool. You should go under there. There's a whole little playground area um, 
underneath the Claremont Bridge. I'll go tonight. Yeah. That sounds awesome. So you can walk under there. It loops around on the back side of the uh, Walmart, and the city is now finishing up the next phase, which is going to take it across Shambly Tucker and up through the mid city dif- uh, district behind the, the various lofts that, that are already there. That's right across the street from Southbound, like the where it, the train it, is. It, it will eventually get up there. It it will be a while before it on gets the, all the way so to the, Southbound. On the other side of Marta. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. that'll be cool. Yeah. That's, everybody's looking for trails these days. So. Yeah, that's the big thing. Connectivity. You sure know a lot. You, you could have been mayor. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna make another run at it, maybe? Yeah. Are you? you know. Come on, my you got wife, 950 votes or so last time. My wife wants me to, a lot of people in the community. Um, but I, I'll tell you, I didn't run because I wanted to be a politician. I ran for two reasons. One, because I felt like my financial background could be a huge benefit to the city mm-hmm. um, and to driving revenue. Because the more revenue you can drive to the city, the more the city can do. People want sidewalks. Right. Well, the city doesn't have money to put in sidewalks. How do you do that? You drive more revenue. And I think my business background, my entrepreneurial background would do that. So that was one. The other was I was just tired of people running unopposed. You get these local guys run unopposed over and over and over. And there are no term limits. Yeah. You know, Shambly had a mayor for 32 years once. Mayor really? Malone, that Malone Street's named after, 1950 to 1982. Oh my 32 gosh. years. Now, that was during a period of time where it was still a mayor-run city before yeah. they brought in a city manager. So it was very different. He ran the city. Yeah. Um, Do you have the what, – what is it that we have where the mayor is equal to the city council? Yeah, um, the same. yeah the so, so um, the way Shambly works is there's a mayor and five council members. Okay. In Shambly, the mayor actually doesn't vote on anything. He gets a tiebreaker if there's a tie, but the five city council members – or what actually votes on anything that comes in front of council. How would the five yeah, have a tiebreaker? Why would they need Someone's that? absent. Okay, that makes sense. Which happens. Yeah. Someone can't be there for the meeting, and so you got a two and two, and the mayor will step in. It doesn't happen often at all. Yeah. The, the mayor locks somebody in a closet. And right, right. Don't know where he is. <laughs> I, I want to make sure that goes my way. I'm going to make sure someone's Just cars in the parking lot. All right. <laughs> Now, we've got, you know, I, I joke, but we, we've got a, a pretty good mayor. Um, you know, Eric and I don't necessarily see eye to eye, but, you know, he's done a really good job for a long time. He's been there. For, it'll be 16 years now when it when this term is up. Um, yeah, so he's done a so, lot. So, you know, a lot it's of it you can say, you know, you know, if it wasn't for what Eric has done and his some of his vision, we wouldn't be where we are. You know, it was the city council and the mayor that decided to create the development authority because they realized there was stuff that needed to happen that they couldn't do. Yeah. So they had that foresight. And a lot of cities have development authorities that do nothing. We weren't going to do nothing. We yeah. said we need to make a difference. And it's a great group of people. Um, you know, that all have different backgrounds, professional backgrounds that, you know, are very helpful when we're deciding. You know, the, the, the thing is, you know, you could say, oh, well, we put these, we gave these abatements to make some of this stuff happen. But we were very calculated in them and we put very huge restrictions. Like one of the restrictions that most people don't know is we said when we cut the Whole Foods deal, it's got to be a Whole Foods and nothing else. We didn't want them to turn around and say, oh, well, we're going to put a bylaw in here now. Yeah. They lose the tax incentive if it's anything other than a Whole Foods. And sure enough, before Amazon bought Whole Foods, they came, as the developer came and said, Whole Foods has got this new concept called the 365 store. They don't want to make Shambly a Whole Foods. They want to make it a 365 store. We said, you can make it whatever you want, but you're not getting our assistance unless it says it's a Whole Foods. Because the 365 store is smaller. Uh. They cut out the baker. They cut out the uh, the, um, uh, the buffet the stuff, butcher, and all that. You know, it's mainly geared towards selling their three sixty five products. And we said no. And the developer was like, "Crap, I'm going to lose this big tax abatement." He had to literally pay Whole Foods to keep it as a Whole Foods. Oh yeah. And so there, that was us being smart, saying we know what's going to work here. Yeah. And, well, it's uh, funny how each of the cities have kind of gone their own route. I mean, I feel like we're kind of a neighborhood city, and you've got you know apartments and the mixed use, and, and it, you know Doraville's got their 
Buford Highway and Dor- Dorville. All I, I don't want to crack on anyone, but Dorville needs to step up their game. They yeah. got to be next. They've got to be next, well, the and they've they- got to realize they can't just let the market dictate. They're going to have to step in and do some that stuff. That Peachtree Industrial Area is just you know and that you was, could easily that was, do something with it. Yeah. And I guess that's what they're doing with assembly. It's just kind of moving all slow. It, well, and they, they screwed up. They should have never sold a third of it to the car dealers. Yeah. You know, they messed up. They should have taken control and said, hey, we're going to step in. And they let, um, I think, you know, you can say what you want about the county school system. My, my child's in the county school system. But I think they let the county school system dictate too much what they could and couldn't do. Yeah. I think the county school system could have gotten a free school on that property if they had just sat down and had, you know, a meaningful conversation. Yeah. All right, well, Van, <laughs> nice meeting you, man, finally in person. Thanks so much for having kinda... me on the show, you know, um, and, uh, you know, if you want to come on Between Two Trains, I'd love to have you all. And, yeah. uh, you know, if, if there's anyone listening to this that has a business owner and they want to have, you know, hear their story on Between Two Trains, just send them my way. Yeah, and a lot of, you know, the people that we've had on still listen to the show, so yeah. maybe you can get a little crossover, actually. Yeah. Can absolutely. you bring us to uh, Huntley Hills sometime so we can both check it out? Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll only we bring We didn't even ten... talk about Huntley Hills and all the great things going on in that neighborhood. Yeah. Well, how about another episode, then? We'll talk pools. Pools. Ooh, we could definitely talk pools. On yeah. pools. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thanks, man. Thank all you. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>